Hi everyone, welcome to The Pen Habit. In today's video review, we're going to be looking at a pen from the Italian manufacturer Delta. And this is an interesting pen. It's, uh, I think there's a lot of hype around it. Some of it deserved, some of it not. Uh, but I'd like to, to go through it. So the pen in question is the Delta Fusion 82. And it comes in a neat cardboard box here. You take the top off the box. And on the inside of the package, you've got this, uh, a couple of cartridges in here, some Delta ink cartridges. And then you get this pen case, and it's a little unlike any pen case you've probably ever seen before. Uh, got some marketing materials and the uh, information about the Fusion nib. And we'll get back to that in just a little bit, because this has got an interesting nib on it. This is the Fusion 82 box. This little elastic comes off the top, and then the top of the box swings open to reveal the pen. This is actually probably one of the more unique pen boxes that I have ever seen. Um, I like it. It's got some neat design around it, uh, and uh, I think it fits the pen pretty well. Let me get all of this stuff out of the way here, and I can show you the pen. So. This is the Fusion 82. This is the Fuchsia version. It comes in a, a whole bunch of different versions, different acrylics. Uh, in fact, Chatterley Luxuries has a whole set of acrylics that are uh, exclusive to them. So if you like this pen but you want a different finish, I'd check over at Chatterley Luxuries first because they've got a lot of limited edition versions of this pen, or exclusive editions anyway. Uh, kind of a pseudo cigar shaped pen rounded top here on the pen. It's all a solid piece of acrylic. There's no line of demarcation here. The clip has this nice kind of streamlined modern design to it. It's uh, stiff, but not too too much so. Nice little bit of spring to it. And it attaches internally in the pen, so they just cut a slot in the acrylic there. We've got a couple of cap bands down at the bottom. It says Fusion 82. And then on the back it says Delta Italy 3361. And that is the cap. Then it comes down. There's a little bit of a dip right here. And then it tapers down to a rounded point at the bottom. Really pretty material. And I don't know if I can get this to focus, but you can see it's just really quite an attractive looking material. A lot of depth, a lot of shimmer. And I've got some kind of black and gray highlights in here uh, with some white and silver kind of floating through very alive material, some richer purples and some paler lilac colors. So it really is quite a lovely material and I think well set off with this silver colored uh, hardware. The threads are super smooth and it takes, let's just do a little quick test here. So one full rotation to get the pen, the cap off the pen. That's actually pretty good. The section, you've got some threads, which are not sharp at all, and then a slightly tapered section with a little bit of a flare down at the end there. Uh, it is a cartridge converter pen, so the threads are very smooth, and both, this is one, this is a pen that you could turn into an eyedropper if you so choose, because it's got acrylic, both threads and the tenon to the section are all acrylic, so with a little bit of silicone grease, you should be just fine turning this into an eyedropper. Uh, it comes with a Delta branded converter and a couple of Delta cartridges, as I showed you in the packaging. Uh, so it's up to this point, it's a fairly, it's, it's a very pretty, but not particularly out of this world design. Nothing super special. I, now, I really like the shape and the color and the material and the design of this pen. I like the feel in the hand. Um, but what makes Delta Fusion, the Delta Fusion 82, a Delta Fusion is the Fusion nib. Now what this is, is it's a steel nib with a little saddle of 18 karat gold that is attached to the top of the nib here. Um, this is interesting. I'm going to read you the marketing materials from Delta. Um, and uh, so it says... The reason for the, or the thought behind this fusion nib is the ink is made more fluid in the vicinity of the tip of the nib because fusion features a plate of precious material that due to its high thermal conductivity 
will tend to heat the underlying metal in turn, transferring heat to the ink in transit between the conductor and the tip of the nib. At the same time, the nib has characteristics of strength and durability for long writing sessions higher than those of nibs completely in gold. So, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a metallurgist. Uh, I don't buy those marketing claims at all. If, if my understanding of what they're saying is correct, the fact that gold is more thermally conductive than steel should cause the gold to heat the steel underneath it up, warming the ink and causing it to flow more fluidly. Uh, no. I'm sorry, I don't think so. That's not how thermal conductivity works. I suppose it might help a little bit if there were a heat source um, on, by, on the gold side of the nib, but uh, I, don't, I, I don't believe that this gold does anything other than give them a, an excuse to put 18 karat, an 18K, you know, 750 hallmark on this nib. Um, it's, it's marketing gone amok that, again, not a metallurgist, but has no basis in reality as far as I, I do not believe it has any basis in reality um, from, from my admittedly limited scientific experience. Now, uh, that being said, this Fusion nib is one of the best nibs I've ever used. Um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of the marketing claims are, are hype, and there's not a lot of truth behind them. Um, but I will say that I feel like this nib is one of the best nibs I've ever used. And I'm calling it a steel nib because really it's a steel nib. Um, the other reason why I don't think that the gold plate on this nib does diddly squat is because I actually have another version of this pen, and I'll explain why in just a second, uh, and the gold plate on mine fell off. Uh, and I've tried writing with it without the gold plate on there, and uh, it writes just as well as it did with, with the gold plate in place. The Fusion nib is, I don't know, it, it's unnecessary, frankly. And it feels like a little bit of a cash grab. Um, because they can, they can say, oh, it's got an 18 karat Fusion nib but it writes just as well without the gold. I would have rather had them made just a really great steel nib and gone with that. But I like this pen. Now, this is one of the pens that I'm going to be giving away, or not giving away, but raffling to Pen Habit supporters at the end of the season. And I liked it so much, I went and bought one of my own. Um, so I have two of them, and both of them have been fantastic. Now, I did mention the one I purchased had a little problem with the plate. It fell off after a few inkings. Um, I was able to get in touch with uh, the distributor, Yaffa, and send it into them. No problems. They were going to re replace the nib and send it right back to me. So um, it was a little unfortunate, but they were really responsive and said, you know, if you have the gold please, piece, please send it with because we want to send the nib back to Delta for them to research why it happened. Um, thus far with the Fuchsia version, I have inked this probably four or five times. I haven't had any problems with the, the gold plate falling off, but I will say my experience is not the first time I've heard that. Um, so all of that being said, this pen is really great to write with. I really, really like writing with this pen. And uh, this is one where I would be willing to put up with a couple of problems, um, even you know having to send it back in for repair, because the way this pen writes is, is pretty special, I think. It feels really, really great in the hand to me, and, and it's got a nice feel to it. So let's do the stats. I'll do the writing sample and explain a bit more about why I like writing with this pen as much as I do. So... Uh, you are looking at a fairly decent sized pen. It's 142 millimeters or capped. And then uncapped, you are looking at 126. Very comfortable in my hand. Uh, I am able to, and one of the things interesting with this pen is I have a tendency to hold my pens a little bit further up the barrel. A lot of times because I don't feel like I can get the nib to the paper Without, if I hold it, I have to hold it at a much higher angle to get the nib to the paper, and I like to write at a slightly lower angle. The 
something, about, I don't know if it's the, the design of this nib or the way that it's set into the section, but this nib feels very long. Um, so I'm actually able to hold the pen right on the section and write at a correct angle. And I haven't had any issues with that at all. Um, it's, it's, this is just a really comfortable in the hand pen for me. They can be posted. So you are looking at a posted pen of 169 and it feels very balanced in the hand when it's posted, although just a little bit long and it doesn't post super securely. It's just friction fit. So it's, it's not the, the most secure poster that I've ever used. Uh, you're looking at 11 and a half millimeters right here in the middle of the section. 13.5 in the middle of the barrel or at the, the widest point of the barrel. And at the widest point of the cap, you're looking at 15.3. And it's also a pretty lightweight pen. So it's only 14 grams with the converter and ink and add another 10 grams for a total of 24 if you want it capped or posted. So it's, as with most acrylic pens, it's a pretty lightweight pen. Um, yeah, really lovely material, well machined. Very the, the acrylic parts on this pen are extremely well machined, nicely polished, beautifully turned. So uh, in that respect, really, really a nice manufacturing on this pen. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a writing sample. I will show you how wonderfully it writes and we'll talk a little more. So here we go. We are looking at, oh, I've had it uncapped for a little while, so it's not usually this dry. There we go. Delta Fusion. 82. And we have a medium fusion nib. Contrary to Delta's marketing materials, I'm not going to call it an 18 karat fusion nib because the main body of the nib is steel. Then there's a gold plate soldered on top. So um, I'll just call it a fusion nib and leave it at that. The ink for today is Diamine Syrah. And there we go. And here is your quote. Oh, I misread my own handwriting. Let us not. All right. So in terms of writing, this pen is just so so smooth. Just an absolute delight. It, you just touch it to the paper. There's, you don't need any pressure. It, it, is, it is a wonderful writer. And I've tried it now with two pens and both of them right out of the box have been fantastic. Um, it is just a, a touch on the dry side but not so much so that it bothers me in any way. And especially because the nib is so well ground and polished, uh, a little extra dryness on this nib doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. Now, in terms of if I wanted to adjust this nib, I would probably approach it very carefully simply because I would be afraid by tweaking the tines too much, I might loosen up this gold plate a little bit. Um, but I have, I have felt no need to tweak either my nib or this nib in the process. Uh, they've both just been really, really fantastic writers. Um, pretty wide sweet spot as well. So it, it writes regardless of how the, the pen is, is um, rotated. It writes high angle, low angle. Um, here's the reverse writing. It actually writes pretty well, reverse writing. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice, nice feeling to the pen. Uh, no skips, no hard starts, no major issues with any of that kind of thing. I haven't had any problems with ink starvation. Um, 
It is a fairly rigid nib, which, which you would expect with two layers of metal on top of each other. Uh, there's just not very much give here. Um, in terms of, this is a pretty solid medium, leading a little bit toward fine. I would, in, in Western terms, this would kind of be a medium fine to me, as opposed to a medium medium, but it's real close. I mean, there's very minor differences. Really quite nice writer though. Um, man, I just, I like the feel of this pen in the hand. Now, let's talk value proposition on this pen because that's, um, that's going to be kind of a, a real issue for some folks. Like I said, I bought this with Pen Habit Funds for review purposes. I got it on sale. Um, I forget where I purchased it, but I got it on sale and I really, really liked it so much so that I went back and I bought another one. Now there, if memory serves, over $200, which is an awful lot for a pen without a true gold nib. Um, I have a few steel nibbed pens that are also in this price range, or a couple. I've got the, uh, the Visconti Van Gogh is one of those. I think that was $285, and that has a steel nib. But most pens over $150, $200 come with a gold nib. Now, you could argue that because this nib has gold on it, that helps to justify the cost. I just don't feel like the gold on the nib is necessary. Uh, and, and I feel like it was put in place to help increase the cost of the pen. But man, this is a nice pen. It really, really, really is a nice pen. Now, if, if the gold nib or the gold on the nib turns you off, I can understand that. It really is understandable. But for me, even having the, the gold on the nib to raise the price a little bit without it having any real impact in the writing experience, the writing experience is so good that, uh, that I can see this one sticking around in my collection for a long, long time. So that has been my experience with the Delta Fusion 82. I love the pen. It's a great writer. It's very comfortable to hold. I haven't had any problems with this one, but I have had a little bit of an issue with my other version, which I've mentioned. It's out for repair right now. Um, but uh, as I also mentioned, I'll be raffling this off in just a few short weeks. So if you are a Pen Habit supporter, this may be one of the pens that you are eligible to receive. So thank you so much for watching this review, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.